Ryan. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Sheep filling in for Tom O'Brien. I hope you all are having a great day. Let's take a look at what we've got going on in the markets right now. Kind of sideways, all right? Obviously, we have some big economic data coming out tomorrow with uh, CPI. Uh, we have earnings in Home Depot. We have Barrick uh, coming out with earnings today as well. Let's take a look at what we got going on. We have E-mini kind of sideways right now. This off the yearly. Yeah, again, you have, you, you know, you have big bars in green on low volume. Your big bars red or high volume. Okay, so it looks like we're probably going to be moving a little bit sideways. To, you know, tomorrow can be strange, right? We're in this interesting kind of window right now, right? If inflate, CPI comes out and it shows that there's still persistent inflation, you know, you, you get maybe some sideways moving to downward. Let's say that inflation is coming down very heavily. Uh, maybe that impacts other things that might suggest that, hey, this is a little bit too strong for too long. What if we increase the risk of a recession here that can send the market down as well? So it, it, we really are looking for a very stable kind of data tomorrow. And uh, if we achieve that, that probably means you'll have interest rates coming down in September, and that's going to cause uh, a little bit of rally in the market, I would assume. It usually does something along those lines. But as it stands today, you know, this is a lot of sideways movement really on the average, right? And I think we're all kind of waiting uh, to see what comes out uh, tomorrow. And take a look at the Russell. We're off about 0.95%. Uh, the NQs, so <laughs> sideways on that. The composite is up about 0.17%. Uh, the Dow futures down about 0.53%, and the Dow Jones Industrial itself down about 0.48%. Now, gold is having okay time right now, about 1.5%, trading at 2,510. Uh, some nice volume to the upside here uh, at the open, and we're just kind of cruising along that level. I mean, really pushing through that 2,500 on some decent volume as well. Make it a retest of that 2,500. Remains to be seen. We have Franco Nevada as well. We have Barrick today. Goldfields is looking to buy. Let's see if we have any other gold this week at all. But this is some nice response, right, from, from gold. Let me see here. We have Cisco on Wednesday. That's going to be pretty interesting as well to read. So they've fired a bunch of people in their networking segment uh, bringing people over into cybersecurity and AI as well, which is an interesting kind of positioning for them. You have Walmart on Thursday, Baba on Thursday as well, John Deere, Applied Materials. Yeah, it's an interesting week for earnings for sure. And Home Depot will be telling as well. Let's take a look. We have crude oil popping up 3.77%. Uh, you have OPEC coming out a little bit. We're going to talk all about this do the kind of the cover all in the beginning. You have OPEC going to be decreasing output, saying that there's lesser demand coming from China. Uh, we have a ton of oil here, but it seems like that might be getting strained a little bit. And then, of course, we just moved um, a bunch of war capabilities um, into the Middle East as well uh, due to an impending attack uh, from Iran on Israel. We'll see if that manifests uh, in any serious way, you have Tesla off about 1.08%. Still dynamics itself down 276 And then the dollar uh, completely sideways as it stands. So bouncing off that 103.10 area wants to get lower, and we'll see if we can. Meta off about 0.48%. Yeah. Kind of we got rocking. Let's take a look at some stuff here. <laughs> Number one, uh, SMCI. Now, this dipped a little bit. And uh, came right back up, which is pretty nice. The earnings was not great, um, but uh, people seem to like it. Now, I, there are some larger banks talking about NVIDIA being the comeback play. If we take a look, I'm going to go just on a larger scale here. You know, this gap down here really is high volume, right? Same thing with NVIDIA. Let's take a look. It's a movement down on some pretty significant volume, right? Not significant, but, but higher than average. And you're getting this movement up today, and it is on lighter volume as well. I think there's a lot of people saying, hey, look, this got sold off. Let's get back in it, and it's not getting that interest, at least today, right? Again, I think a lot of this has to do with what's going to go on um, with the financials tomorrow. We'll go back to SMCI. 
So again, if you remember this kind of sank pretty heavily here, it sank 20% in the trading session. Despite the pullback, the stock is still up about 70% a year. For its fiscal fourth quarter, Supermicro saw its revenue surge 143% to $5.31 billion, which is pretty much in line with what analysts had expected. Its earnings per share of six twenty-five dollars fell well short of expectations of eight oh seven dollars due to the gross margin pressure the company experienced in the quarter. Surge generating heat. I mean, really, in this realm, I think if you want to get into something like this now, take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor. The more that news comes out about, you know, what's going on in the AI sphere and these server spheres and everything like that, TSM seems, TSMC seems so well positioned, right? Uh, I mean, they can still raise their margins, right? They can still raise the price of their goods if they have some issues with their margins. You have people, obviously, NVIDIA using them as a foundry. You have even Intel, that company, uh, in some capacities, having TSMC build some of their chips. This is pretty insane, right? Anyways, NVIDIA itself is also up. Uh, I think this is just a little jump. Things selling off. Everyone's like, now is the time uh, to get in. Uh, probably around some news of larger institutions buying into it, but this is on low volume. Uh, and what I expect probably, you know, again for this week is just a movement sideways, and then we're going to retest uh, some high volume lows and some stuff. Let's take a look at Barrick Gold. So they have earnings tomorrow. I mean, this is a huge bar up on some pretty good volume as well. They're also eyeing uh, opportunities in Canada. So this expansion is good uh, as well. Let's take a look here. Barrett Gold is the number two bouillon producer. It's looking for investment opportunities in Canada as prices for the precious metal push higher. Uh, the CEO, Mark Bristow, said he's cautious about embarking on major deals, but is keeping an eye out for opportunities in the company's home country. He says, this is a good jurisdiction to invest in. If there's one place we look all the time, it's Canada. Uh, soaring gold prices are driving producers to seek expansion through takeovers in stable jurisdictions. Goldfields 1.6. So this is another one as well. You have Goldfields had an expansion of 1.6 billion deal to buy Osisco Mining. That was announced today as well. Pretty nice. Goldfields is South African. So they're getting some exposure to Canada. And if, gold, if Barrick's looking into that, that might be... Um, interesting idea. Folks, uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Steve Rhodes.